Hello friends, I'm so excited to see you again. In today's Jump Chain video, I attempt to explain two different writing styles that are both important for understanding a Jump Chain from the most holistic point of view possible. I talk about a sort of external point of view where you are looking at builds and perks and items and companions and drawbacks. And then I talk about more character driven point of view that talks about motivation and that helps reveal why it is that a jumper does the things that they do as opposed to their strictly theoretical capabilities. I have personally found this kind of thinking helpful when it comes to creating jumpers who are more well-rounded and who are more capable of being fascinating from an outside point of view. But as a friendly reminder, jump chains do not have to be interesting to other people in order for them to be valid. And this is just me talking about one of the ways that I have personally made jump chains more interesting. My purpose here is to help introduce you to ways to have fun, not to tell you how to have fun or to encourage you to think, feel, or even do jump chains any one type of way. I hope that this helps, and I hope that if you enjoy this video, you leave a like or you consider subscribing. Both of those things are tremendously helpful. And now, on to the video. When it comes to understanding jump chains from the most holistic view possible, I think that one thing that is helpful for me is to try and divvy up the writing that will occur into two types. The first type is the outside view, the third person objective focuses on the journey on a grand scale. That is the sort of writing that thinks about the jumps that a jumper has visited, the jump docs that they've used, their total build and their individual builds over the course of the different steps of their adventure. And then there is the more in-depth character writing, which is personally more interesting for me, but I'm going to take a second to talk about both so that way people watching this video can have a better understanding of jump chains, at least from my point of view. When I refer to mechanical writing, it may be easier for some people to think of it as Chuya or choose your own adventure writing. This is the sort of writing that looks at jump docs and determines builds. It decides the items that a jumper will buy. It decides the perks that they will affix to themselves. And it also does things like deciding their companions and their drawbacks. This is very important writing for understanding the journey from an outside point of view. I think that this is incredibly helpful, incredibly important writing, and I think that one of the ways that someone could better understand this is to think of a jump as something that occurs in three phases. The first phase is the build phase, and this is the phase that occurs when a jumper is actually deciding the sorts of things that they're going to be getting from a jump dock. It decides the point, the sorts of challenges that a jumper is going to have to overcome in the face of things like scenarios and drawbacks. And also, it decides how it is that a jumper is going to be equipped right before they actually begin a jump's active phase. This is very important because, as far as I understand it, lots of people decide that a jumper gets their perks at the beginning of their time in a setting. So this means that even if a jumper has some sort of perk that grants them godhood, um, and they got it from a specific jump, the second they step into that jump, they're going to have that godhood. And that is something that is going to color the rest of their journey in a setting. It is not as though they are going on the adventure and they are gradually unlocking things over time, although I think that that would be a very fun alt mode and a very fun set of rules for an alt chain, and that is in fact the basic cornerstone of the quest system, which is something that I plan to talk about. The second phase is the active phase. The active phase is the actual time that a jumper is in a setting. It is the time from which they have decided their build, they have acquired their things, at least as I believe most people rule, and then they are on a journey in a setting for, let's go the standard length of time that a jumper will be in a setting, which is a decade. And then there is the end phase. And during the end phase, the jumper has that critical, fateful moment where they have to decide whether or not they're going to stay in the setting forever, making it their new home. They're going to continue on their chain, saying goodbye to the world, potentially depending on, uh, if not, depending on whether or not there are other jump docs in that setting, or return home. 
obviously most jumpers most of the time are going to choose to continue on their journey they're going to say goodbye to the world they're going to go back to their personal reality or warehouse or however it is that they do their selection process and then they're going to either select or hear about their next destination they're going to get their next jump dock and they're going to decide their next build all of that is very important from a mechanical point of view, and I think it's important that people understand that, but that is not the sum totality of an individual jumper. And I think that if someone wants to have the best experience possible with jump chains, that they need to understand this reality and they need to think about their jumper as a character rather than as the sum totality of their abilities, their weaknesses, their friends, and their items. I think that you need both character-driven thinking and build-based thinking in order to have the most fun that at least someone like me could have doing a jump chain. And as an example of this, one can think about the sorts of details that you can learn from a jump dock, which are things like what sort of powers characters in the setting might have, what sort of feasible obstacles might someone have to overcome, what sort of cool objects, or maybe even what sort of awesome friends someone could make in that jump, and then think about all the things that a jump document does not outline. There's lots of things that a jump doc probably wouldn't outline, like what is someone's favorite food? What sort of training could someone do in something that is not necessarily a power set, but is something that is fairly unique to the setting? Take, for example, the sort of martial arts practiced by the Khajiit in the Elder Scrolls series. That is something that for the most part is not going to be in a perk, although there actually are perks that talk about these sorts of styles and give you expertise in them. But that is also something that your jumper could just learn on their own. And it is something that depending on their alt form at the moment, their, their current body type, they might be able to use with maximum effectiveness even without having it fiat backed. I think that that is something that is worth thinking about, and it's something that you might not take the time to think about if you only focus on something like the build details of most jumps. But it's also something that, if you think about from a character point of view, makes a lot of sense. The fact of the matter is that a decade is a decently long time to experience life in a setting. It may feel like a flash, but that's only if you look at things from the perspective of a jumper that has done tens of jumps and is thus centuries old. If you think about this from the experience of someone who is actually living it moment to moment, and if you think about how long a decade feels even to you as an actual living human, you'll realize that a decade is a decently long amount of time to be in a place. I myself don't think that I've ever lived in any one place for one continuous decade, and I am 28. I think that that helps to show just how long a decade could be. Now, to be fair, many people my age have lived in one place for a decade. It just so happens that I am personally a military brat, and because of that, I have moved from place to place. But still, I cannot really fathom the idea of living in one continuous place for a full decade, and I think that that sort of wonderlust and that sort of normalcy of going from place to place is one of the things that helps make jump chains fun to me, but that sort of trait is also something that is present in many of my jumpers. It's true that many of my jumpers in many settings will have a starting location and they will stay relatively close to that starting location, but many of them will also go all the way to other universes, depending on what particular setting they are in. If one of my jumpers is in Marvel, they very well might go to a wholly different universe every couple of months. If they are in Minecraft, they might go from major biome to major biome, and they might even leave the overworld and end up spending an extended amount of time in a place like the Nether just for the heck of the variety. I think that these are the sorts of traits that are not going to be listed in a jump dock, but that help flesh out a jumper and help explain why some jumpers do the things that they do. For me, understanding the theoretical limits of a jumper's capabilities are often only interesting if it's coupled with a context that makes it interesting. 
It's not super interesting to me to hear that a jumper is bulletproof unless there is a reason why that news should be special. If it is their first jump and they are bulletproof, that would be interesting to me. But also, if someone tells me that they are bulletproof and they use that as a way to intimidate their enemies, I think that would be really cool to learn. That is the sort of character detail that you probably would not get from a jump doc, but that someone who is writing out a jumper who's having a fun time with it would be able to tell you. If they think that their jumper being bulletproof is something that they could use to intimidate their enemies, that reveals a lot. That reveals that being bulletproof is not normal in a setting. That reveals that their jumper is the sort of person who very well might just sit there and take bullets and look at their enemies or approach menacingly while not attempting to dodge out of the way of their enemy's gunfire. I think that those sorts of character details really help bring a jumper to life, and they're the sorts of things that I am personally very fascinated by. That's the sort of detail that I love to hear, and it's the sort of thing that helps influence the sort of build that a jumper might have. A jumper that has perks that make them bulletproof, especially early on, might decide to take other perks that make them into a bruiser type. They might decide that they want to be someone that gets up close and personal, or they might even decide that they actually quite like being in gunfights because they are in no danger. And so they decide to specialize in guns and even to encourage their enemies to try and attack them by being flashy, drawn out duelists who go out of their way to make themselves targets while doing flashy trick shots. Those are the sorts of character details that to me make both thinking about a jump chain and hearing about another person's jump chain so fascinating. I hope that this sort of thing has helped explain why it is that these sorts of details are important and why they're helpful. I think that it's very fascinating to hear about a character's internal motivations, and I think it's really neat to hear about an author's motivations and the sort of things that make an author decide that this is how they want their jumper to be. In my videos where I talk about doing the Luciano the Jumper Chain, I'm going to try to make an effort to explain why it is that I choose the perks that I choose and also why it is that I like the perks that I choose and also how those perks build on each other. Right now at the points in the chain where people who have early access can see we are on our second jump and our second jump has not made Luciano radically overpowered or anything. It has just helped them solidify stuff that they already kind of knew and helped them expand their skill sets just a little bit, but kept them in the physical bruiser type character and helped solidify that they are a bruiser type who is used to doing things with their hands and who has skills in hand-to-hand -hand combat. I want to keep that particular theme going and gradually expand it over time, specifically because I myself am a disabled martial artist. I know basic martial arts, I know basic martial arts styles, and I am decently experienced in martial arts, and I am also physically disabled. And both of those things intersect and they affect the sort of way that I think about video games and also about fighting. And I want that sort of thinking to be a part of Luciano the Jumper's chain. And those are minor details that you probably wouldn't be able to pick up just from looking at a perk list of Luciano the Jumper. That's part of why, to me, all of this stuff matters. I know that this particular video did not feature a whole lot of other jumps. In fact, it didn't feature any other jumps or any screen sharing. But the fact of the matter is that for me, in order to create the most holistic jumpers that I can, and in order for me to have the most fun that I can with a jump chain, I need more than just different jump docs to look at. I think about jumpers as people, and while their capabilities are an important aspect of that, I also think about things like, oh, what sort of forms do they prefer to be in if it's up to them and if they're among friends who know about their nature as jumpers? What are their religious beliefs, especially because jumpers explore a range of different universes given enough time and will therefore have experiences with a wide range of different gods? I think about their beliefs and I think about their ideal family structures. 
And those sorts of questions help me think more about what a jumper would eventually want to accomplish given enough time and what sort of settings a jumper would want to go to, which help me determine build details. Lots of this little stuff is what helps make jump chains so holistic and so fascinating to me because when I look at a jumper, I don't just see them as the sum total of all of their perks. I think about them as people who also have extraordinary abilities. And there are great things and bad things about being people who have extraordinary abilities. And that is what a lot of the fun of a jump chain is for me. I would love to hear more about what makes a jump chain fun for you, and I hope that you are having a wonderful day, and I hope that we get to hear from each other very soon.